Well, interesting uh, outcomes there from the CBK supervision report. And let me just quickly get some uh, reactions to this from KCB's group marketing director and head of communication, Angela Murig. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Abby. I saw you nodding your head as uh, we went through that particular story. Perhaps <laughs> what does this mean for the bank? Well, for the bank, it means that all our efforts are coming through because I think we've been making an effort to grow the bank and uh, uh, shift the perception and, and, and actually participate actively in growing the Kenyan economy for especially the last few years. And as a bank, of course, we have existed for over 120 years. But the point is that in the last few years, we have made a lot of effort to really grow sectors of this economy, uh, especially with our Tujiajiri program, with lending, even when it looks like um, we are in a tough economic space. But KCB is really at the forefront of driving a lot of the changes that we want to see come through in this country and growing our economy. And, and I'm happy to see it better fruit all right and of course uh, from that report uh, KCB emerged tops in terms of market share mm. with a market share of about 14.4 percent yes compared to the second bank that is Cop Bank and followed by Equity Bank but from the uh, developments in the banking sector Angela mm. of course uh, credit uptake has been slowly uh, sort of uh, stagnating if I may say so well, at, uh, it's, it's the, not really that rate. credit has been stagnating, mm -hmm. regardless of the rate cap, because if you look at it, all the banks grew their books, sure. uh, especially the tier one banks. Mm -hmm. They all grew their books. I think it's about sectors of, of, of the economy that were able to benefit from this growth. Mm -hmm. So when you look at small businesses, SMEs, micros, because those are more higher risk portfolios, there is a challenge there in, in the lending, in the level of credit they're able to access when the rate cap is on. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what people keep talking about when they talk about a need to amend or adjust it so that it can take into account the realities of the market. Because, of course, the <coughs> lending is really a subject of repayment capability. Sure. So if you cannot repay, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders. We cannot just lend the money. So, and and, and for, for small businesses, there is a fundamental issue of how will they repay? A lot of them don't have enough collateral. We are well aware of this. Uh, or they might not, even if they don't have assets to mm -hmm. support the borrowing, their incomes might not be stable enough to, con to, to support continuous. They you know the nature of borrowing is that you have to make continuous payments. Mm -hmm. And a lot of small businesses cannot guarantee continuous payments or continuous business. So uh -huh. um, that is what creates a challenge. So have SMEs been affected by this? In terms of yes, uh, I would say that is cap. one of the sectors that is um, negatively impacted by the rate cap, um, and this can be can you, if you look through any of the reports, you will see this coming through clearly that that is where credit is. But overall, credit has grown in the country, but. Mm -hmm. In some sectors, they have a challenge accessing credit because of the nature of the types of businesses they are right. in. Yeah. Perhaps uh, how significant has it affected SMEs? Because many of the businesses we are talking to, they are saying uh, right now banks have sort of uh, increased the scrutiny before you get your loan, especially if you are an SME. Yes, because you, you, you then have to, your pricing is a factor of the risk involved. So because the, the rate cap has limited how much the, the, the lending rate can be, it means you then need uh, more effective due diligence on the repayment capability of that, of that small business, which is why actually we started all our different programs uh, under the Tujiajiri banner, whose purpose is to improve the financial literacy even of these business owners, uh, of, of the general public, because if that improves, uh, and even the tools that they are using to run their businesses, or even how they approach the banks, this will improve the amount of credit they're able to access. Mm -hmm. Because of course there's credit that is available, it's just the nature of that credit might not be adequate. Right. So for instance, you can get mobile loans regardless of, and I mean, it's a question how much limit you can access, but uh -huh. uh, all anyone can access that, uh, as right. long as of course you've Proven to be a good borrower, mm -hmm. meaning you repay your <coughs> debt. All right. But uh, the 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 point is that we start this program so that we can improve the literacy, the the knowledge base that people are working with. So, like when we look at our SMEs, we know 
for some of them, bookkeeping is a challenge. So when they come to apply for the loan, you cannot get a, a complete response on the on how much that business is able to turn over. And if they're not keeping proper books, it's very hard for a, a formal institution like a bank to properly lend you money. Interesting. Yeah. And of course, uh, Angela, this ties to what you're doing through KCB Lionstead, yes. where you and I do agree that uh, a majority of SMEs have two major challenges, that is financial literacy and limited access to capital. Actually, that's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the, the, there are four areas we looked at when we said, let's kick off the Tujiajiri program. We know financial literacy is one issue, which of course then, you know, and all the other elements tied to it, which mm -hmm. means your access to credit. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is that you need to have effective networking. Uh, one of the, the, the biggest challenges, a lot of people will tell you that I don't need money. What I need to know is how to run my business properly. What are some of the pitfalls I could run into? Uh, what are some of the challenges I will, I, will, I will face so that I can know how to plan for them? You know, uh, how do I, for instance, cash flow management is a, is a function of understanding your business and the cyclical nature of your business. So if you don't understand that effectively, then you run into cash flow problems. Mm -hmm. uh, another, so that's networking is one of the other issues they have. Um, another issue we have on is market. So you're great at producing this particular product. Let's say like um, there's a lady I buy from this Ubuyu powder, which is an amazing product. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a powder with uh, magnesium and women and this herbal stuff <laughs> so uh, and, and this lady is amazing at selling this stuff but mm -hmm. the entire market she's able to reach is what is it knows about her on Facebook and how many people talk about her mm. so market is a serious problem also for businesses so you might not necessarily have a problem of finance because the first problem you need to resolve is how do I sell my product more effectively how yeah. do I get exposure how do people get to know about my product one of the um, Clients we had, I don't know whether to call them clients, prospective applicants, hmm. mm -hmm. you choose one. Knock yourself out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, one of the prospective businesses, or rather, one of the small businesses we had on, uh, I think it was season two of Lion's Den, yeah. was a fellow who did dried fruits and packed them. Yeah, vacuum packed dried fruit, which is just as good as... Um, as, as a real fruit just falling off the tree because it does not really add or anything other than the moisture. Yeah. Which your body already is 70% moisture, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you eat it, you don't lose any of the, of the vitamins or, you know, the health benefits that come from eating fruit. Yeah. But his biggest challenge was exposure. We provided exposure by putting him on Lion's Den. Mm. So when you look at it, you have to look at businesses and say, what are all the different mixes of challenges and issues that they face and what are some of the ways we can help to resolve that? Because when they grow, we grow, mm -hmm. and the whole country grows. Interesting. And uh, what's KCB's strategy around uh, the Lounge Den in terms of expanding it and impacting society? So actually, it's a part of the Tujiajiri program. Our Tujiajiri program is our flagship program out of the foundation, and it has four key pillars. We have the training program, which anyone can apply for, whether or not you've started your business or you're already uh, a running concern and you want to upskill the people in your business or yourself and you want to come in and learn the softer skills or hard skills, you know, like financial management and things like that, mm. the Tujajiri provides that. The Tujajiri, it's, it's actually a TVET program run with a lot of uh, technical colleges. So for a lot of people, we actually help to build their skill base for existing and completely new. Like there are people who just completely don't have any skill and they come in yeah. and we build the skills for them. Uh, the second pillar, of course, we have then is mentorship. Uh, and Tujiajiri falls under the, the mentorship uh, part of the Tujiajiri program, which is improving the literacy levels and also providing opportunity. Like Because these are venture capitalists, by the way. The Lions are venture capitalists. I think there's a sometimes confusion in people's minds. They assume because it's branded the, with the bank yeah. that it means the bank is the one that is actually providing the funds. But no, this, these Lions that sit there are of their own volition make a decision to invest their funds into it. We mm -hmm. just sponsor the production of it. Right. It's actually uh, a part of the Dragon's Den mm -hmm. um, Shark, Shark Tank. Tank format, the global show. Yeah. So that global entrepreneurial format uh, developed by Sony Pictures is the same thing. We pay royalty and we therefore then follow the same rules. And so our lions invest their own funds. And But very impressively, so far they have invested in the first two seasons 129 million mm. shillings. All right. So And the highest person even got 40 million shillings out of the show. So our intent is not just to provide funding, but to also improve the financial literacy of people because they listen to the questions that people 
people are asked when they come to to sell that uh, their their various products or the what do you call it equity in their businesses, mm -hmm. as well as the exposure their businesses get when they come onto the show. Interesting. And Angela, looking at the bigger picture, mm -hmm. there are SMEs out there who would want to be part of Lansdale. Yeah. But the fear is, I might appear there, my idea might be stolen. <laughs> How do yes. we assure such people? There's an expression, by the way, about, uh, you know, something about having here. It's a Swahili expression, kina nyuele na kila mtu anayo, or something mm. to that effect. Mm -hmm. But the, the, idea, the, the idea that someone else can steal your idea and make a success of it is, I think, um, not very accurate. Very mm. few people are able to take someone else's passionate idea and make a success of it because if you don't know how to make it work, but I see Kenyans doing that a lot. We mm. are all keeping quail legs, so we all have quail legs. Yeah. The, the guy has opened a butcher shop here, so therefore his friend comes and opens three, four of them. Sure. I was driving down Sagana Road the other mm -hmm. day and I saw so many people with the same thing, next, 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 next. By the time you're getting to the, the last guy, he has one car parked there. The first guy, his parking lot was full. Mm. But by the time you get to the last guy, it's dead. Diversification. Diversification. People mm. should have different ideas. So I doubt that there are a lot of people sitting around waiting for someone to come on TV and tell them the idea. But if you truly have a unique idea mm. that you can show that it is unique, you can patent it so that it becomes illegal for someone else to go and produce that. And, and, and it Do gives the you... SMEs know all these things? But this is what education, that's the purpose of our education. That's mm. why we say these things. That's why I'm sitting here. Mm. So that we can say this. You can patent your idea even in Kenya. You can even patent your packaging, to be honest. Even your, if your packaging is unique, you go to um, Kipi, yeah, Kenya Industrial Packaging, something or the other. Property, yeah. yeah. And you can pack, you can get a copyright for it, and no one can copy it, and you can sue them if they, if they copy your idea or your packaging or any element that you can prove is unique. Correct. So if you can prove that it is truly distinctive, then you can, you can protect it. But what I always tell people is passion for your own idea, for your own business, that is the most effective approach because... You talk about it, people get to know you're the one who does it, you own it. Mm -hmm. I'm always telling guys, it's okay even if I hear someone, a competitor has done something similar to what we have done. If we are the best at doing it, we put our best foot forward at doing it, we are the loudest and passionately own it, mm. then that becomes your space. All right. And uh, Angela, looking at the SME ecosystem in the country, mm. what is your overall assessment in terms of uh, the future of SMEs in Kenya compared to SMEs in South Africa, SMEs in Ghana? Because it's one thing to have such a, an incredible program. Mm. At the other end of it is sustainability, yes. especially in a time and age where we are seeing SMEs not hitting their third birthday. Yeah. I know. Um, it's, it's actually the fundamental uh, problem for small businesses. Uh, how do you survive long enough to build a sustainable going concern? Mm. And, and that's part of the reason we are doing some of these things. And, and um, I know you can look at all those other markets and, and look at the levels of maturity of the different uh, small businesses in their markets. But even when you talk about the corporates and the different corporates we have in Kenya today, they all started out as small businesses. Mm -hmm. And then they were able to invest effectively and keep growing until they are the corporates they today so which is why we are putting programs in place to grow from the sole proprietorship all the way to a large corporate and we provide the different tools and um, uh, programs like this to help them survive now not all of them will survive you have to be realistic and it's all really greatly dependent on the person who's building it because the that's why i say the passion is so important and even when you listen to the lions you hear them keeping on saying that you know they want to see that you have the passion for that business you're driving that when you think eat drink everything you do is about that particular business you can make it survive mm -hmm. because you will be able to put everything you're getting back into it and ensuring that it grows and that you're putting the right rules and structures to, for it to be able to survive now of course there is a chance that you need to learn what those elements are but that is where organizations like ours exist and there are a lot of organizations that exist in kenya to support businesses and i think it's really the, the impact the prerogative is for those business owners to make the effort to insist on survival. For me, my greatest concern is when I see family businesses not making it past the first or second generation. We, we bank a lot of them and we are beginning to develop programs now for helping these businesses to grow. So, um, for instance, we have a Biashara Club and that Biashara Club provides a lot of training programs that any 
business owner can attend. Yeah. And when you come there, then you learn about how do you make the different trusts. For instance, the first generation has to put that business structure in place, find employees that are passionate about it, put systems that ensure that that business can survive with or without that individual who started it being in the office every day. But all you these are costs, Angela. Yes, but all these are costs, what, employing people. But this is the whole point systems. of growing. ICT systems. Oh, no. And I was not even referring to ICT systems, but yes. Checks if you can balances. automate. It's right. checks and balances, actually, that make a difference to a business. Right. Control. So you, if, if, if you have the ability to ensure that your business can't survive without you, meaning you're not the only one who does, you're the sales guy, you're the CEO, you're the messenger, you're the driver, you, that's not going to work. Mm. You have to spread it around. You're the accountant. It, you have to get, and, and, and uh, we have a program we call the Business Development Services Program. It's available and again under Tujiajiri. And what it does is that we take university students who have studied law, who have studied accounting, who have studied marketing, and they go and we assign them businesses that are part of our Tujiajiri program. And they come to your business because the person has several businesses that they support. Yeah. And they are able to then set up uh, to do your books for you or help you do your books for you. And we, we, our intention is to grow um your sort of deloits or pwcs at a much smaller scale that can provide these services for small businesses mm. because of course it's impractical to hope that that person can afford then the big boys you have to provide things at different scales and this is what i mean by kenyans actually stepping up and being able to because those gaps exist people can see them they exist mm. so I mean, I, 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 uh, my sister started a business that I really admired. Um, for years, all media houses used to go through one big uh, place to sell their media. Mm. And, and then she turned around and said, all these other small radio stations, no one is representing them. I'll start a business that represents those guys. Mm -hmm. So everyone must look and say, where is the niche I can play in? So you don't always have to play in the top tier. There's a lot to spread all the way down. The cake is big enough. Yes, it's big for everybody. And you, you, you can all succeed. You just need to pick out what is the area that I can become an expert in. All right. Angela Muregi, perfect place to end the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And of course, do keep it here on KTN for season three of KCB Lounge 10. Starting September 4th. All right, September 4th. That's when it kicks off. And uh, Angela, just bear me pardon. And do you support the government's plan to... if I'm not wrong, saying that uh, they do not support and 6% uh, are supporting it and uh, around 3% not interested or even they are not bothered by this. As we scroll up, we can be able to see some of the tweets from the various uh, people on social media. Quite a lot of you saying that uh, they are not open to this particular government plan to levy taxes well that is the feedback let's keep interacting on social media and of course uh, keep it locked here on KT news for more analysis on business news well for now that's where we leave it at my name is Abegina. coming up next we have us giving you the latest from across the country